So this story right here, y'all, is absolutely fascinating. As you all know, RFK Jr. has been running as an independent. He originally ran as a Democrat. Then he was like, look, this process isn't fair. I'm going to run as an independent. Uh, and he did that. Now, at his best, he was polling at about 20%, maybe even a little bit above 20%. That's impressive for an independent candidate in this country because the system is so biased in favor of the Democrats and the Republicans. We have a two-party system. Without getting ranked choice voting, it's like mission impossible to get elected at, for such a high office as an independent or with the Green Party or with the Libertarian Party. So, look, it was a big deal. Now, that was the case, though, when it was Biden versus Trump. That's when RFK was polling a little over 20%. But as time went by, of course, Biden dropped out. Now you have Kamala and Trump, and Trump sort of, you know, rallied his own base. And um, and Kamala has seen a big surge since Biden dropped out. So now he's all the way down at about 5%. So this is not the trajectory they wanted, right? This is not the trajectory they wanted. And um, you have RFK's VP, Nicole Shanahan. That's her name, right? Yeah, Nicole Shanahan. She went on the Impact Theory podcast and she said the quiet part out loud. She spilled the tea as to the internal conversations happening with the RFK campaign. And this is a big deal. Listen to what she says. What my gut tells me right now is that we just have to keep being honest. I got to just keep being honest. I got to keep focusing on what matters the most outside of party lines. I need to... Um, focus on a vision that goes beyond November. And if that means that we stay in and, you know, there's benefits to staying in. If we get over 5% of the vote, we actually establish ourselves as a party. 71% hmm. of Americans want a strong third party with a real shot at winning. Um, there's even public funds available if we get over 5% of the vote. So we could get I think it's like thirteen and a half million dollars um, in public funds to keep the party going, mm. and and that's you know that's worth something. Um, that means that we can position for a real third party uh, election in twenty twenty eight where we don't have to go around and spend tens of millions of dollars on ballot access. By the way, this was one of the reasons why everybody and their mother who knows the specifics about the way the system works tells people who want to run, run as an independent, don't do it. Don't do it. You're purposefully making your life way harder. Because if you run as a green or a libertarian, at least the ballot access is easier. You'll get on more states that way, right? It's this massive logistical headache with all the hoops you have to jump through just to get on the ballot as an independent. And it's an even bigger headache for an independent than it is for greener or libertarian. Okay. Let's continue. She hasn't dropped the nuclear bomb yet. Election in 2028 where we don't have to go around and spend tens of millions of dollars on ballot access, which means that we can spend all of that time and money campaigning. Um, so, you know, there's two options that we're looking at. And one is staying in, forming that new party, but we run the risk of a Kamala Harris, uh, Kamala Harris and, and Waltz uh, presidency because we draw votes from Trump or we draw somehow more votes from Trump, or we walk away right now and join forces with with Donald Trump. And, and you know, we walk away from that and we explain to our base why we're making this decision. Mm. Um, not easy. Clearly. Yeah, not an easy decision. So the conversations they're having behind the scenes. Hey, this ain't going well for us. Should we drop out and endorse Trump and make a deal with him? Wow. It's very strange. Over a long enough time frame, it seems to me every gut instinct or visceral reaction from the left turns out to be correct. Because people were saying it from the very beginning that like, hey, well, I actually think he's just a spoiler for Trump. I think that's basically the role he's playing. So what ended up happening, and I warned you guys about this too, I told you this was going to happen is um, it looked like for a while he was going to take more votes from Biden and help Trump. But the reverse actually happened. More of the polls now show that the RFK campaign takes more votes from Trump and helps Kamala. 
So they thought when they were, they honestly, genuinely and sincerely wanted to win. They really thought they maybe had a chance early on. But then when it became clear they didn't, they started looking at, hey, who do we help and who do we hurt? And now they've realized we, we end up hurting Trump more. That's crazy. No, it's not. Because as I told you guys, he codes very right wing on the campaign trail. The things he's obsessed with, the things he talks about, the narratives he pushes, it appeals more to conspiracy-brained right-wingers, so-called anti-establishment right-wingers, than it, it appeals to anybody else. It doesn't appeal to the left. And so ultimately, now they've realized that, oh shit, would you look at that? Even though, my, even though their last name is Kennedy... And in theory, that's Democratic royalty, and you should take more more votes from the Democrats. You're not anymore. Because you talked quite a bit and said a lot of stuff, and people heard it loud and clear, and you are certainly more in league in terms of your rhetoric with somebody like Trump. And so now they're literally coming out and saying that, yeah, we're, we're in talks with Trump. By the way, remember when they uh, RFK, his son, accidentally posted a video of RFK talking on the phone to Trump after the Trump assassination attempt, and then RFK wanted him to pull it down, and he did pull it down because there was a moment in there where, first of all, they were talking all chummy and buddy-buddy, and then he's like, we're going to win this thing. We're going to win it. We and, and RFK's like, yep. Wait, who's we? Who's we? You're running against the guy. What are you talking about? And so it became kind of clear. Then there was reporting, hey, they are actually in talks. I think RFK came out and denied that they were in talks um, or it fell through at the last minute. They were, they were maybe working on him endorsing him at the RNC or something like that. That fell through. Uh, but then now it looks like we're right back to that position. We're right back to, they now realize, look, we're not going to win. And they're going to try to make a deal with Trump to endorse Trump. Um, and then look, what would the trade-off be? Uh, pfft, I mean, we know it'd probably be him in some high ranking position in the administration. It would probably be him in some high ranking position in the administration, which by the way, if RFK is as anti-Trump as he has pretended to be at many points, I don't know how or why you could ever make this kind of a deal. It wouldn't make sense. It would be like me being part of the George W. Bush administration, Right. I think he's a war criminal. I think he's a torturer. I think he belongs behind bars. I think every decision that he makes when it comes to economic stuff is dead wrong. Why would you work with somebody who you, according to your own words, are completely against? He even said at one point, I'd never, I think it was, he was asked if he'd be his VP, he said, I'd, I'd never do that. And now you're talking about endorsing Trump and you care more about preventing a Kamala Harris win. Now, by the way, Again, and this this drives me crazy. So if you go to RFK's uh, website, right, and you go through his policy positions, on paper, on paper, he should be more sympathetic to the Democrats, more in league with the Democrats. Like if he believes the things he says he believes in his platform, then there's no question he would be more supportive of the Democrats than the Republicans. But what's driving this? It's probably some semblance of personal grievance, right? It's probably some careerism where he feels like, oh, I can make a bigger name for myself being in the Trump administration. And so all the so-called concerns about policies and values are out the fucking window and you, you're going to end up going with the person or very likely will go with the person who you say you have bigger disagreements with if you compare platform to platform, right? Because ultimately, what is RFK on paper? On paper, RFK is kind of like a standard Democrat with massively anti-vaccines, anti-big pharma, anti-modern medicine views, and a dash of conspiracy theory as well, right? He's like a standard Democrat with a dash of those other things. So then, look, that begs the question, um, is there a massive difference between what you are nominally on paper and what you are in reality? And I think the answer to that is yes. His effective political beliefs are different from his nominal political beliefs. So what he says on paper, these are the things I stand for, that's not really what drives you. Because, Again, most of your rhetoric on the campaign trail is way more sympathetic to the right. You code way more right wing. And now you're considering being in league with the person who you say that you disagree with more on paper. 
So there's so many different angles to this. The final point I'll make is this. It actually gives me some kind of hope looking at the reaction of his own supporters here. And I actually feel bad for a lot of his supporters because uh, there was a, a very large number of them who came out and they were like, wait, 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 wait. The reason I'm not voting for Trump is because I have many massive issues with Trump. And, you know, you are supposed to as well. And so I'm not going to vote for him if you cut some sort of deal with him and you endorse him. So there's plenty of people who support RFK who look at this as a betrayal of RFK's value set, right? And I don't know what the breakdown is. If I had to guess and shoot from the hip, I would say it's probably either 50-50 or maybe 60-40, right? That it's either 50-50, 50% is like, no, I don't support Trump for a reason. Um, or it's 60% like, all right, fine, I'll get on board with Trump, you know? But either way, that's either 50% or 40% that are that are like, hey, fuck you, man. Like, what are you doing here? You're betraying your own movement here. And so I actually feel bad for the people who genuinely and sincerely are ideological and are like, no, I, there's a reason I don't support him. And they might have shitty reasons for us, but it might be like, he is okay with the vaccine, right? He did Operation Warp Speed. How dare he? It might be dumb reasons, but there might also be some other good reasons sprinkled in there, right? Like, for example, RFK says he's the anti-war guy. First of all, no, you're not. You support the genocide in Gaza. You love arming Netanyahu and arming Israel and shitting on Palestinians 24-7. So you're not anti-war. But like, they are anti-other wars and Trump packed his administration with neocons and increased drone strikes 432% and tried to coup Venezuela and says he wants war with Mexico in the second term. And I don't doubt that a lot of RFK supporters are like, that's fucking crazy. And that's super uh, warmongery. So... I don't know, man. I have a lot of thoughts about this. But again, on a long enough timeline, the intuition of lefties always gets proven correct. And in one way or another, the feeling was you're going to end up helping Trump. At first, they thought it was just a matter of uh, taking more votes from Biden. Turns out that's not going to be the case. If anything, he would take more votes from Trump. But now it's like maybe for careerist personal ambition reasons, I'll make a deal with Trump and I'll be in his administration. And um, look, I'll keep it real. If RFK drops out and endorses Trump, does that hurt? Kamala Harris and Tim Waltz? Answer is yes. It does. It can make a, a difference of maybe a percentage point. And that's a big deal. That's a big deal when you have elections that are, are you know, based off of razor thin margins. So I don't know, man. Uh, I don't know. But if he does it, again, I'll be interested to see the reaction. But uh, suffice to say, again, this stuff, like if you, again, if you go through his policies here, in theory, he should agree more with a Democrat. But, as I always try to teach you guys, there's always a difference between what your nominal label is, you might say, oh, I'm a liberal, right? What well, your nominal label is, and what your effective label is. Effectively, how does RFK end up working in the world? He ends up bolstering more right-wing narratives, bolstering more uh, Republican politicians. And I don't know if he knows this, or... He doesn't know it, and he's just sort of fumbling and bumbling. But either way, I, I find his impact on the body politic pretty nefarious. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop. And watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.